Elliot Ovitz, you've written a book. Mr. Nighttime is the um, uh, is likely to establish uh, in in the world of psychiatry a, a new syndrome, which will have a whole become a whole growth industry, and it centers around uh, the affliction or the malady of sleepwalking, and uh, it's something that has been characteristic of of, of, of your nocturnal experiences since a young since childhood uh, if your mother's to be believed and and uh, you became aware of it only after you were married uh, your night walking escapades was something to which you were completely oblivious until your wife started complaining about your going out in the middle of the night yes sir that's correct um, she uh, seemed to uh, keep a journal of my uh, suspicious activities and uh, she confronted me with it and I just didn't know what to say I, I had no idea that I was a sleepwalker or anything connected to it it seems like my mother had kept this dirty little secret not only from the rest of the family but from me as well so I really didn't have a leg to stand on I I denied it well within 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 the first months of your marriage to Hazel you she would uh, confront you with where have you been, where, where did you go, mm -hmm. and you would deny, well, well, not that you were denying it so much as you were just, well, I guess you were denying it. You yes, were, sir, that's correct. Not that you were aware that you'd gone out. I wasn't deliberately telling a falsehood. I just had no uh, proof that I was going out. No recollection of it. I had absolutely no remembrance whatsoever. Uh, uh, once in a while, there'd be a strange stain on my pants or something, or you know, some little thing would be awry, but I, I had no idea of how I got that. And it wasn't until later that I started really focusing on what it might be. And Paying attention to detail. it. Yes. Well, she would accuse you of going out, and you would deny it and, or, or, or not see the possibility that could have happened, which would only tend to enrage her, as you write in your book, because she would sit there and watch you get up and leave and watch you return early in the early morning hours. And to have you deny something that she'd witnessed firsthand was something that her temper wouldn't tolerate. That's true. Uh, this woman was chronically, uh, uh, just a chronically unpleasant person, a complainer anyway. And the least little thing would set her off. And she just would go into these furious tantrums. And well, y yes, but I think the, your spouse disappearing in the middle of the night for all hours and then deny that that's not just a little thing. I mean, it may it may not warrant an eruption of temper but certainly well I certainly had good cause but I, I didn't I really didn't uh, do anything uh, improper yeah. and you started paying closer attention to the, your, your, your personal condition as you'd awake awaken in the morning in Las Vegas to see if there was some evidence some manifestation of having gone out and yeah. The first thing that came to your attention were some casino chips. Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, things were going along quite well. Uh, nothing to speak of. Um, no telltale signs that I was out and about at night. Until one morning I woke up and I had about, you know, about $70 worth of tri trip uh, chips in my pocket. And uh, it, it kind of piqued my interest. I wasn't too sure how they got there, but it didn't concern me. And then <clears throat> a few days later, I woke up with a couple of hundred dollars worth of chips. And that's when I did start to get concerned. And then after that, it just kept getting, the amount get, kept getting larger and larger. You, you write in your book, Mr. Nighttime, that there came one morning when you had <clears throat> as many as $3,500 worth of casino chips on your dresser when you woke up in the morning without any clue as to how mm -hmm. they got there. Yeah, absolutely. Did you, did you frequent the casinos during daytime hours? No, I, I don't know how to gamble at all. I've never taken an interest in it. It bores the hell out of me. Plus, my father was a gambler, and I decided I'd never have his addiction. He mm -hmm. died broke. He would, he would bet on two bugs crawling across the floor. He bet on everything. And uh, so he died broke. Um, we went down with him. We were bankrupt after he died. Mm -hmm. He was embezzling uh, from the company, and 
So anyway, it's a pretty sad situation. So I decided just because people live in Las Vegas doesn't mean they gamble. There's a lot of, of people not. that don't. So I just... And for, uh, for as much as you knew, you didn't until these casino chips. Apparently, whatever you were doing, you are doing it rather well. How, how much... Now, you write in your book that you would take these chips and put them in a box and let them collect. And ultimately, before you took steps, there was over $15,000 worth of casino chips collected in that box. Now, this was over a couple of months' time, and not every morning did you find more chips on the table, but frequently enough. You were a, vi you were a regular visitor. Did you, did you have a preference? Which casino chips did you... They were all different. That was the thing. They were from all over town. I mean, over a two-month period, you had an extra $15,000 yeah. in a shoebox. Yeah. That's I know. Uh, so it was a strange situation. The guy thought I was a little nuts, I'm sure. You know, what did not you many tell people him? hire. First of all, would you find them in the in the yellow pages? Oh God, are you kidding? <laughs> there are places full of them. Yeah, yeah. A and lot what? of private investigators in Las Vegas. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, all right. It's like fifteen pages. So you more said, than hookers. What did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Vegas Tourism Board will thank you for that. What uh, What did you say to him? I mean, did you give him a reason, or did you say what you wanted him to be looking for? Or what? How did Not you? particularly. I didn't want him to think I was more nuts than he thought I already was. <laughs> just so follow me and tell me I what said, I did? Yeah, just follow me. Just could you please? And I didn't elaborate because he was shaking his head on that already. So uh, if he thought I was really odd, then he might not have taken the case. So I thought maybe he would find out on his own, and uh -huh. uh, that would be okay. Got it. Not only did he s discover that blackjack was your game, he also determined that you were what in the trade is called a card counter, something which the casinos don't like. And when they <laughs> discover someone who's counting cards, which gives them an advantage, I was ab about to say an unfair advantage, but then the house rules give an unfair advantage to the house. So yeah. it sort of equalizes that, <laughs> Absolutely. maybe. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, he did something that shocked you because he, you thought he was working for you, but since he also has as a client the casinos, he reported you to the casinos as a card counter, and you were banned from the casinos. Yeah. He double-crossed me, basically. The guy's supposed to be working for me. I mean, it's, I, he's working against his own interest, I think. I, I think that should be illegal. So naturally, I had problems with him. Well, apparently he, a circular went out and all the casinos have your photograph off their video and they will not allow you in even though you're asleep. You went to them and said, listen, I'm, I'm just a sleepwalker. How could I be a card counter? How did they, how did they receive that argument? They, they weren't impressed. They, they said it doesn't matter. You know, we're not going to split hairs here. You were sitting at that table, wake or sleep, doesn't matter. You were counting cards because your eyes were open. Yeah. And uh, we don't want you back. One of, one of them said, if you want to sleep, book a room here. Yeah. God. Anyway, I, that's the end of those days. No more chips on the dresser. You, um, also, you also gave up on Las Vegas and moved to Atlantic City, where they also apparently have a circular on you, and you found that you weren't waking up with chick, chips next to your bed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to move to Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's a couple of places left. All right. Uh, Elliot Ovitz, Mr. Uh, author of Mr. Nighttime. Thank you. Thank you.